But anyway, we're going to have... Doug and I already split one head. We didn't split the one that Al shot yet, so we'll do that after we show you this. So when we do this, we split it down the middle to clean out the brain cavity and um, if there's any like bone matter, fragments, and then uh, we try to retrieve all the metal and the wadding from the shot. And we usually find it. Doug's shot ended right above the tongue, so it didn't actually go through. Sometimes, usually we'll find it right on the tongue, and his ended right above it. So, <clears throat> we're going to take off the jowl and the ear, just because it's nice to be able to clean out the ear canal before we stick it in the pot. And we'll take off the jowl to either make a jowl bacon or uh, go on chale, which is like an Italian style bacon, but that's up to Al, really. Or we can just go to sausage, but um, when you see it, this has a really nice seam of meat um, right down here. So when we take off the, the jowl, we just kind of cut a line basically down here to the lip. Um, and we, down here there's not much meat, but we usually hang it from there, because most of the time we make a guanciale, which is hung to dry a little, you know, for a few weeks. So we usually just put a hook there. So you just start right here below the ear, and you'll get down to the skull. Right up here, the skull hugs it pretty tight. And then I'm just drawing a line that comes down to the lip. I mean, it's basically a straight line. And then it's going to be this whole mass right here. Now underneath, I'm going to open up a little seam here in just a minute, and you'll see the cheek muscle, uh, the masseter. If you, some people think that this is, they call this the cheek, but the cheek muscle is actually under there. It's what articulates the jaw. And it's kind of fun. We'll talk about this a lot today. Um, you'll get to <clears throat> these facial planes where two sections of either meat or fat run into each other, or they're right beside each other. And you can kind of like, even though they're right beside each other, the meat will sort of separate on its own. So that's called seam butchery. And here in just a second, once I get to it, it'll kind of, you can kind of start to see it. Um, the muscle, the masseter muscle, is right under here. And it, this thing is right on top of it, it's just moving on that plane. So I'm going to do this one, and then you guys are going to do the rest of them. And that's kind of the way the whole day is going to run. Doug and I will demonstrate and we'll hand you the knife and then it'll be your turn. <laughs> and you can do as much cutting or as little as you like, but if you're ever going to do this on your own, we recommend getting in and doing it. Because the more you do it, the more it's going to make sense later on when you're doing it on your own. So there's just, it's just a separation. There's the, the cheek muscle right there. And it's just it's sitting on there. So when this happens, when you get to a seam, your knife work isn't really doing much outside of just releasing the fat away from the other section or the meat from where the seam is. And that masseter muscle is like a little hockey puck. And that can come off with the jowl bacon. In fact, a lot of times you'll see jowl bacon that has that um, attached to it, but we usually leave it on the head. If you don't want to use the whole head, if you'd rather just uh, just take that muscle off, it's a really good braising cut, slow cooked, and it's really, it's almost beefy in its taste. Yeah, you can see it's a pretty large section. I heard someone say it's huge, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to buying pork jowls in the store, and it's a chunk of it. So I've yeah, they, they it. trim it, a, and I'll trim this a little bit more heavily, so that's kind of what you end up with. This is the jaw right there. But I didn't have to worry about cutting the bone. There was a one of those facial planes, and it just peels right off. A little bit of the lip. The lip is kind of weird, <clears throat> and the snout, too, in their texture and makeup. But That could come off, but the, the, uh, the jowl, or the jaw is right there. It's just sitting right on the inside of it. And then the next step is to cut off the ear. So usually we cut just right right here. Take the ear off. And that's just cartilage. And then that'll be cleaned out. This will go in the head cheese. This will be cleaned out. This will go in the head cheese. The backside already has been cleaned out. <clears throat> Got that? 
And then the next step, there you can kind of see the seam. That's why they do gel, but you can seam of meat, pretty big seam of meat in this one, and then fat. On some pigs <coughs> that are really fatty, the seam of meat is like a quarter of that, and then the rest of it's fat. This one's a little bit meatier. And then it's just a matter of, for the bacon, and we don't have to do all of this right now, it's just a matter of trimming some of that off. Because this is all uh, salivary glands and things like that, which are edible if you want to go that route, but usually we trim them off. So I'm not going to trim this too heavily right now. Uh, and if you're not a jowl bacon person, like we said, this can go to sausage. Or um, you could actually, you know, braise this cut too. I don't know if they have it up here, but down where we are right now, like braised pork belly and things like that are a big deal these days. So this could be a roasting cut if you wanted it to be. We've heard it goes really good with baked beans when you're yeah. making your baked beans. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, like the hawks and the trotters are also really good inside baked beans. Um, but I want to make sure we keep moving here so I'm not going to trim this too much. But that would end up being jowl bacon. The skin can stay on it until the bacon's made or it can be taken off. Um, I would recommend it. It stays on it for today at least. Um, and then if Al doesn't want to use or make jowl bacon today, I can get wrapped up, frozen, and write future jowl bacon, and he can take it out in December and cure it if he wants to. <coughs> so, and with a lot of this good stuff, we, we try to do a lot of it while we're here, but a lot of it can be put off for a later right. date. That's nice if, if you're doing this and you don't have time to, to cure everything at once, yeah. you, won't. you can freeze it for later on. And we talk about that a lot. There are, there are a bunch of things that we do that you don't have to expect to do today <coughs> or even tomorrow. You can put it in the freezer and, you know, use it at some other time. You know, like when we first started, I would put things away and in the winter time when I would have snow days. Yeah, the long winter school. months <laughs> when you're looking for stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm going to clean out this ear canal clean that out and then this is going to go in the pot. Someone else needs to grab that head and we'll get started on that. Or someone else will. So this is a really good example of a time where um, we will throughout the day there will be minimal use of the bone saw but the bone saw is used a few occasions. This is one of them. This is probably the most labor intense use of bone saw today. Um, but anytime we use the bone saw, uh, there is a, um, a couple things to keep in mind. One, um, it, it is toothed, so it only cuts on the push, so it's not, it's not cutting both ways. So it's easy to pull, and then when you go to push, that's where the teeth grab. When you go to use the bone saw, um, because it's uh, toothed that direction, um, it wants to bind real easily. So if you try to bear down on it, you won't be able to slide the bone saw across the bone. It'll just bind and jam. So instead, you want to just push across the bone, and the teeth will do the work. If you try to push down, you won't get anything done. So you just push across it, and, and the teeth will, will do the cutting. Um, but you don't want to cut meat with a bone saw. You don't want to cut bone with a knife. So we have a little bit of meat to cut through here. Um, and I'll leave a knife here for someone else to do this. Uh, but this is an occasion where you'll cut down through, the meat until you get the bone, and then you stop, put the knife down, get the bone saw out, cut the bone until you get to meat, put that down, and then finish the cut with the with the knife. So you want to go ahead and do this guy, and it this 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 does help. The head helps to have somebody else hold it steady. Now you cut all the way down. You can just for a marker, but you won't. If you can follow it, it'd be impressive. <laughs> That's a challenge. Yeah, you can get quite a bit much back here, go down through the fat, and then there's even a couple. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then you'll have the skull pretty soon, right there. Actually, Al, yep. uh, you hit far enough back with your slug, watch your hand, that actually blew the skull right open. Look at that. So that's already what cut. Sorry back there. <laughs> it is good? Amazing. Perfect. Let me see what I've never seen that before. Uh, look at that. You blew out the entire back up. So that was just cutting right here. 
Um, but he didn't need to because the back of the skull was already just wide open. Um, and what in the world? There's no brain in there. No one all came out yesterday. It got, I think a lot it got of got flushed out, out the, the yeah, nose. Out, yeah. My yeah, goodness, out that's a scrambled it wide it open up. hole. Okay, so go for it. and the jaw are both very, very tough to cut through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and stand it up here. And then you have the jaw to go yet. Uh, no, no, because you'll hit the jaw immediately. Finish that up with the knife. Yep. Just follow that line you're on. And then, obviously, this is like I said, it's kind of graphic. But once we clean it up and dress it, it's, really it, <coughs> it's worth doing. Tongue right in half. Yeah. So. Do you ever cut the tongue out bowl? We, we have, yeah. In fact, we'll often do that. You might be in the bowl. Go ahead and grab this bowl. Just, just because we have it right here. That's all it took. It might have been hard. A lot of meat under that jaw. Absolutely. Or is that the tongue? That's the tongue right there. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now. This will get rinsed out and cleaned. Um, it's really important uh, to know where the brain is. Um, was. <laughs> yeah, right, was. Yeah. So this has a quite a bit more of a taper to it than the other pigs did. Um, and there's not a lot of bone left. I mean, we really did a number on it. So he hit far enough back, and I feel like... Yeah. Is that the center of the brain cavity? Yeah, you hit pretty Perfect. much dead center. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot. Nice. Did you find the slug? Right there. Yeah. It fell off. Yeah. yeah. When it was cut in blood or? No, it's like plastic wood, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, quite a bit up here. Some right here. Yeah. That's the wadding as well. Uh -huh. Some more. Yeah. I mean, what matters? You know, more than anything, of course, is that it dropped. The, the pig is right away. eating and drinking or minding its own business, and then it's yep. Yep. completely out. And that's what happened. That was awesome. So this will get cleaned and rinsed, and then we'll treat it like a we'll take that hat. Yeah, I'll take it in. Jeez, I mean, there's just nothing. Radium. Yeah. Oh gosh, many times. I've got to turn the camera on at this point, but after the two heads were halved and cleaned, we put them in a pot of simmering water that we had added celery, onions, garlic, and bay leaves to. And we let the four head halves, a trotter, and two hawks, the four ears from the pig, simmer in the pot all day long as we kept stirring it and removing the foam off the top. At the end of the day, we strained the broth and the bones and the meat from each other. And as you're seeing here on the table is the bones, the meat, the cottage. We separated everything out and took out all the delicious meat, set that aside into some bread pans. We seasoned up the meat. Then we took a gallon of the broth and rendered it down so there was only a quart left, which made it into a nice thick gravy. We poured this over the meat in the bread pans and let it sit overnight and it's set up beautifully. And this right here you're seeing is our head to tail terrini. What you do is you slice this nice and thin as you can see in the picture. You put it over bread with a little bit of mustard on it. If you add a pickle to it, it just tastes amazing. 
This is Olivia's new favorite sandwich meat. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We're gonna be having some more of the pig harvesting videos come out over the next few days. We'll be having some regular vlog style videos also. And we have a few more surprises in store for you. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps the channel grow. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.